Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is regularly <laughs> scheduled meeting of the uh, Select Board of the Town of Sunderland. First order of business, I will entertain a motion to buy FCAT a iPhone so they can <laughs> <laughs> take <laughs> uh, the meeting. Wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah, we don't need another one. <laughs> uh, it, it's, um, it's interesting watching what what we have to do present time to to get on TV with the uh, the Zoom and the TV for community and all of that. So John's gonna make it easier, right, John? In theory. <laughs> oh, you know what that means? <laughs> uh, I think it's all about keeping a job sometime. All right. So anyway, so first order of business is the uh, approval of the minutes of February fourteenth. Motion. Second. We have a motion made and seconded to accept the minutes as presented for February 14th. All those in agreement, please signify by saying aye. 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 Wow. Guys in unison tonight. Jeff 30, please, on that. Next up is introduction to the CARE Collaborative. Yeah. So via Zoom, we have Emma Golden from the CARE Hi, Collaborative. Emma. And Emma, you should be able to share your screen. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a, sh a shot here. <clears throat> share, okay. <clears throat> so I think I'm starting to go full screen here. How's that, can you see yep. it okay? Looks good, right? Yeah. Okay, great. So hi everyone, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Emma Golden, I'm the director at the CARE Collaborative. We're a nonprofit, 501c3. Um, and today is just gonna be a brief intro. We've, we've rented an office space in Sunderland um, on 116. Um, and we're glad to be here. I don't, should I just dive in, is everyone ready? Sure. Yeah. Okay, great. So. Our mission uh, up on the screen here is to improve the quality, visibility, and availability of community elder care. Um, we've been doing that for about 20 years, primarily through education and training for uh, direct care workforce caregivers and unpaid family caregivers. Um, I'm not going to read this next slide to you because it's really long, but it is just a snapshot of kind of who we are as an organization some of our values, why we're doing this work in the community. Um, so this is also available in our, on our website and in our brochure. So if anyone wanted to go back and really dive into that, you're welcome to. Um, so I just wanted to give a little background on the elder care crisis. Um, there's a, a shortage of caregivers that's actually been going on since long before the pandemic, but the pandemic has really highlighted that crisis for a lot of people who were previously not aware. Um, many elders, especially frail elders living at home, depend on their caregivers for um, help with their essential activities of daily living. And, and COVID has really highlighted how critical that social and human interaction is as well, especially for people staying home. Um, and the recruitment training and retention of new workers is a continual challenge. Um, and then I just have a little statistic here. So uh, LifePath is the uh, Aging Service Access Point for Franklin County. Um, and right now they, they have a wait list of 170 elders for state home care. Um, and that's primarily due to a shortage of workers. Um, and then private agencies report similar um, issues as far as having folks who need care but can't get it. Um, and so that's just a little bit of the background of why we exist. Um, and so what we do um, as a workforce training program. We did this training for 15 years at Greenfield Community College. Um, our students are trained to provide loving, compassionate, and skilled care, and graduates are pro of our program work all over Western Massachusetts in nursing homes, home care agencies, assisted living facilities, hospice, and a lot of other settings. Um, and so we're excited to bring this training to our own location in Sunderland. Um, it was a great partnership at GCC, and now we're ready to kind of manage the whole shebang. Um, they were, you know, they did like the bureaucracy of being a school, and we did the training, and now we're also going to be a school. So that'll be a fun new part of our work. 
Um, and then on an ongoing basis, we offer educational in-services and advanced skills trainings for incumbent direct care workers, and then continuing education and life enrichment programming for all caregivers. Um, this is the space. I wish that I could give you all a tour in person. We had hoped to do an open house in October, and then Omicron happened, and it just didn't feel right to ask people to take on additional risk. Um, but this is how it looks right now. You can see in the back right, that's like our clinical lab where we have a, a mock nursing home set up for our students and for, for training um, in the classroom. Um, and then we also do family training. So in addition to workforce training, we also want to make sure community members have access to that education. Um, and our program is pretty unique in that we are we organize it by module. So our our workforce folks who are taking the full CNA home health aid training take the whole five weeks, and community members could slot into an area that they need training in. Um, my examples here are mental health and dementia, safe transfer. So, like if you're taking care of somebody who just had surgery and you just want to get some information on how to help them be at home safely, you could come and just take that module. Um, and then we offer consultation and support for family caregivers um, as well. Oh, there we go. Um, so I'm going to dive into a little bit more about what we do. This is a lot of information, um, but basically we help people get into the workforce and then we want to support them while they're in the workforce. And so we have this caregiver membership program um, to provide supports and services um, to home care needs, nursing assistants, PCAs. Um, and two of the major benefits that they get right now is 25% off our first shop, which is in South Deerfield, and then 55% off of body work in our massage program, which is also housed in Sunderland. So Sunderland's really multi-use. It's our office, it's a classroom, and it's where folks can get massage. Um, this is just a little bit about the massage therapy program. Um, it's pretty unique. I haven't seen anything similar to it. Um, Direct care workers have higher rates of back injury than almost any other industry, while at the same time, um, many aren't covered by OSHA. PCAs aren't covered by OSHA standards. Um, and so to combat that, we can offer massage. Um, so it's a little bit of a community subsidized program. So our community members can get full price massage, and that means that our caregiver members can get it at a 55% reduced rate. Um, and then our massage therapists also work at a slightly reduced rate, so it's real community effort there. Um, and that's what we do. That's what we do in Sunderland. This is the space. Um, there's two rooms that were just perfect for massage in the back of the suite. And so on the left, you can see the waiting room. And that's Teresa. She's our head massage therapist, but she's also a licensed practical nurse and one of our instructors. She's been on our team for many years. Um, and then that's the treatment room over on the right. So you can see we don't have a window, but we did put up that beach mural so you can feel like you're outside. Um, and then during COVID, we have an air purifier there in the back corner um, and require masks still. Um, and then this is just a little slide about our thrift shop. If you, if you drive through South Deerfield, you may have driven past us. We're right off the common. Uh, this is a 100% donation-based store. Um, everything comes from the community. We keep our prices low so that everyone can afford to shop there, and then our caregivers get an additional 25% off. Um, and then one other piece I wanted to share with you all is that we are planning to offer this Sunderland space for rent. Um, I'm not really sure how we're going to advertise that, but if you know anyone who ever needs a room for a meeting or an event, please send them our way. We're happy to share our space. Um, and that was a whole lot of information given to you really quickly. Um, but that's who we are, that's what we do. We're all about making sure elders have the best quality of life possible, primarily through making sure that caregivers have all the tools that they need um, to care for them. Any questions? Dave? Mm. Off my head, top of my head, no. I'm good. Thank you. Emma, have you uh, worked with the senior center at all? We have an in Sunderland. I can't figure out how to stop. Oh, I figured it out. I can stop sharing my screen. Uh, no, we haven't done anything with the senior center yet, but that's primarily because we still haven't finished getting all of our licensing from the state. Yep. Uh, we 
because it's a new site, have to start over with the Office of the State Auditor and the Department of Public Licensure. And um, it's been four months and we haven't heard back from the Office of the State Auditor, so we're going to start knocking on their door a little bit to try to move that forward. Um, but yeah, once we're more established and have that training program up and running, yes, we would definitely be working and, and at least communicating with the Senior Center if we have offerings that we think would be helpful. Yeah, they, they have, uh, the Senior Center has a new director, uh, Jennifer Remillard. So it, I would, I would uh, say that, you know, if you have an opportunity just to give her a call, um, I think I have a number here. Um, and, and her number, Emma, is 413-665-2140. Definitely reach out to her. Thank you. Yeah, and, 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 and probably just if you talk to Jennifer, tell you're in the area what she can do, what you do, I think it's a it's a good start, you know, and, and again, that, that'll help, you know, help them and help you at the same time. So, okay. Yeah. And and I also like the fact that um, we, I know we try to recycle stuff and like not too long ago, we had a well. It, it's before COVID. We had a um, uh, a chair walker that go, went up and down the stairs, and we couldn't find anybody that needed it. But having someone like you, you know, has a different clientele, it'd be interesting. You know, it'd be great to be able to make referrals also. So that's a oh good yeah, definitely. Good. Okay. All right, yeah. Jeff. Questions? No. Welcome to the oh. to the town, and um, exactly. you know, hopefully, um, hopefully we get the license stuff all ironed out soon, and you can open up. And I'm sure there are people excited to get massages. So. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, massage luckily is ongoing. So if oh. you wanted to try that out, you're welcome to. Um, all the information's on our website. Um, carecollab.org or you can call me um, and then yeah the licensing has just dragged on for so much longer than we could have anticipated but I think it'll work out I mean we have everything in order it's just COVID and the state and things are going a little slower than they normally do which is already slow so glacial pace here but um, yeah we're psyched to be setting up we waited a long time for that spot we wanted we had really specific needs as far as accessibility and on the bus route and on the border of Franklin and Hampshire County, and so that spot and it is really perfect for us for right now. So great, good. Thank you, Emma. Glad to be here. When you got when you when you uh, open up full time, let us know so we can uh, let everybody know. Okay. Will do. Thank okay. you all so much for for listening and having us in town. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. So Emma again. Emma's from the uh, collaborative, um, collab or care collaborative. And that's going to open up at 267 Amherst Road, Suite Number Three, which is down by the entrance into the uh, Plaza with Dove Nest and the Frontier Pizza and Dunkin' Donuts and everything. So. Well, it's in the building next to it, um, yep. where the chiropractor used to be, yep. and around back. Yep. So. Yep. Alrighty. Thank you, Emma. All right. Thank you all so much. Have a good night. Alrighty. You also. All right, next up is a budget presentation. Um, we have finance committee. We have not a quorum of the finance committee. We have, I believe, two members. Linda, that's you on the phone? Yes, it is. Okay, so we have two finance yes, committee. Yes, here. Joe's here. Hi, Joe. Hi, finance committee. All right. Guys. Um, if you uh, have any questions or want to ask any questions, just hit the uh, the hand button, okay, so I can see it when I look up, and uh, and your or just say, hey, I got a question, and unmute yourself. That'll be fine, also. Uh, so, your first presentation is by the building commissioner, Tom. Yeah, how you doing? Thank you. I did a test the last two years. Uh, Thank you, Tom. And a week Three 
reason I did the annual report was just to show what we're up permit wise and revenue from um, 2020 to 2021. We've got total permits from 127 to 169. And then revenue went from a little over 39,000 to almost 116,000. Basically, the proposal was the same as um, the prior year, and after we went through, you know, the finance, the uh, personnel, and, and yourselves, they we uh, just split the difference, and we're going to come back and present, you know, for the full amount this year. So, Tom, Tom how 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 is I mean, what are most of the permits? Are most of the permits new construction or renovations, or how how would you how would you uh, sum that up? Renovations. Renovations. Yes. The new construction, and that's where the a surprise was how much revenue came in. Some was the new senior you know housing, but um, that was no you know didn't make this big a difference. You know, there was a lot of other small renovations, which I was I knew were busy, but I didn't realize there was that much, you know, up from the prior year. You know, it's probably going to stay busy next, at least this year. At least this year. I don't know. I keep saying it. Someday it's got to come to a halt here. But uh, all your contractors, they, you know, like today I was doing inspection at Hadley for the, um, Popeyes, and they've got three McDonald's coming, um, Starbucks, all kinds of new ones, and you know, not just Massachusetts, but in the area, they hired, he said, four more supervisors uh, with what they've got coming up. Never mind the local contractors are booked for the year. So. so, Jeff, what what do you think about the? Uh you want to break down the two options for the, the yeah so um, last year the the building commissioner came in and said look this is what I'm making relative to my alternates and it was below what they were making he said I'd, I'd like to be making what they're making it at least and um, I think last year we bumped up the the hourly rate to 35 um, and the hourly rate for the alternates is 38, right? Yes. So um, the building commissioner set out two, two potential options, which are to increase the salary again to 38, or like the uh, electrical inspector and plumbing inspector, and rather than have a, a set budget, take a percentage of the, the revenue. Uh, of the revenue plus a stipend because as the the building commissioner in addition to permits people call and say well what can i do this on my property can i do that can i put my shed here and um you know so the building commissioner looks at the zoning and says no you have a 20-foot setback your shed has to be 15 feet further from the property line or whatever and so there's no permit fee involved with that but he's also doing work on behalf of the town so i think that um you know it, it's it's a uh, i think that the, the request for a stipend to cover that kind of sort of zoning advice that doesn't have a, a a fee associated with it makes sense um i haven't done a specific analysis i think it's hard because it depends on the year you know if we right, bring in a hundred thousand dollars in permits that that's great the <laughs> building it's, it, it would probably be better for the building inspector and worse for the town to give 85 percent and then if it's a lower year it's probably you know m makes more financial sense from the town to do a um a salary so i think I, it's hard to predict which makes more financial sense but i think that you know my perspective on the building commissioner is he's been great. He's put in a, a lot of time and, and effort into the town and um, 
works very hard. And I think that, you know, it, it certainly, his request is certainly reasonable from my perspective. My, my, my opinion is that we're not, we're not supposed to be making money off from fees. Right. Fees are supposed to be covering, right? Correct. Technically. That. Right. So I, I and so basically what we're what we're at the thirty eight oh six for fifteen hours a week, we're we're basically saying it's coming out of itself it's self perpetuating. The the we're paying the, the fees are paying for that. So, so there's a revenue offset, basically. Yep. Right. I, I don't have. I personally don't have a problem with that. Again, we're not supposed. We're not supposed to be making money off them. Right. It's supposed to cover the administrative cost of issuing the permit and any inspections. Right. And, yep. Right. So, I'm 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 okay with the, uh, and and I think that's how that's how it has to be sold also at town meeting is that. It's not. It's not a increase. There's a revenue offset for that. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Crystal, David, what do you think? Yeah, I, think yeah, I don't have a problem with it either. Hey. Yeah. Hey, just have my hand up. Oh, hand up. Go ahead. Sorry. Hey, so much. No, no problem. I just was curious, and I'm more worried about Tom and his team. Um, what did they base the? That are the, the percent on because obviously permits have been up, you know, with, with all the recent trends. But if they go down in the next two to three years, they might make it um, a bit of decrease in their salary. So I I have not seen permit fees anywhere go down ever. So I don't, I don't know that I understand what you're saying, but it's also the fees are based on the cost to the town to conduct the work. Um, so unless we're also going to, you know, and, and I think the reason that it's at about 85% is because there is some administrative overhead that the town has to do um, as far as actually collecting the checks and breaking up the amount. Um, so I, I, I don't see the, uh, the fees being necessarily reduced and that having an impact. But if... I don't know, Tom. If you're, I mean, you've worked in a bunch of communities. Have you ever seen fees? Now, just with the with the COVID and the pandemic, it seemed like a lot of people were pulling permits. I might be totally wrong. You know, it just seemed like it was a big jump over the last two years. Right. Oh, I see what you're saying. The number of permits, not the cost of the permit. Right. Yeah, because if you're going off a permit, like option B, let's say. So 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 okay. Good good. That's actually a good question. Tom, do you have historically what what you're what you're looking at for for fees generated from? from well, he has the year before. Huh? He has the year before on there. Yeah, but I, I, I'm saying the last four or five years. Have right. You, like, the trend line. Prior year before 2020 was the um, North one. Yeah. So that was 200. So I didn't want to. Yeah, we can't count in. that. Um, you're most better off. On average, it's, it's around you know 40. If you look across the board, and of course. Usually a community every three to five years will want to present the electrical plumbing in the building, a review at the board as far as the increase in the price, which was done, I believe, three, three or four years ago. Right. Yeah, I think, increase in fees. I think plumbing and gas just did it two, year, two or three years ago. But yes. yeah, uh, building inspections and electrical, I think, were three or four. So basically, you're looking at around 40000 the last couple, you're, you're, so the point is maybe, you know, you had had more the last couple of years, but previously we were averaging around 40000 a year. Yes. Yeah. And, that, reality would, and that would be about how many, how many uh, permits taken uh, out? I want to go back, it was a, one year was 117, you know, it, it was a little over 100 normally. Yeah. In the last five years. Maybe one year was 96, but it's always right around that. Other than an occasional big project, that permit numbers are probably yeah. the more important number. Yeah. Okay. 
So, so one thing that if we're, I, I would, I, would, how, how, do, how do we post your hours right now, Tom? How, I mean, what hours do, do you, do you have posted hours? No, it's all been by time only. So it's, you know, I, I meet people. They seem to like it a lot better. Um, for instance, you know, I'm in Hadley. Nobody even comes in there. Very, very seldom like it used to be. So it's more convenient, especially the homeowners to meet and go over their project at the house. Yep. And now that we have the online programming, it's, it's phenomenal. So like I was away uh, two weeks ago and still, you know, every other day, I do Hadley one, one day in the morning and uh, Sunday the next day reviewing the permits on the, on the answer emails and you know responding what's required to get the permit issued yeah. which makes it phenomenal I still can put in you know, eight hours when I'm away and give me something to do in the morning okay. I, don't, I don't mind it I actually um, makes it more convenient really for you it is yeah. it is it's, it's, and everybody really the applicants get a quick response yep exactly uh, so it's been all by the way good and they seem to really you know like that a lot more. Yeah. More, more personable coming out, and, yep. which right. I did before as well. But it's it's. Uh, yeah. And I have either that or we meet here, and it's at their time. You know, they don't have to worry about the you know coming in at night. I'll come in in the afternoon, whatever works best for the applicant. Yep. That's good. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add, uh, Tom? No, I think Jeff did a great job explaining it better than I did. All right. So in your in your in your in your budget, how how's the budget changing for expenses? Your expenses. Uh, basically, the big expense for next year is going to be the code books. As long as we do, we're so far behind with the state inspectors getting that because they're retiring quicker than they're replacing them. Um, as long as the new, the tenth edition does. You know, come into place this year. You know, we'll have to replace all the new code books in the office. So that would be the big, big expense. I have to have those. Unfortunately, I think every town has to have them in the office available. You're going to have to ask Mr. Nail it. I'm sorry. You're going to have to ask Mr. Nail it if you're going to have to do that. Right. <laughs> at your, get your uh, CSL update class. Correct. And we're full, and they're fully integrated into the uh, the uh, international building code now. Yes. Yeah, we have the stretch code. You had that uh, actually. Joel implemented that before I started. You've had the stretch code longer than most uh -huh. communities. So the theoretically, we we don't have as many amendments to go to anymore. Oh, it's all the mass amendments still. In fact, the ICC, Massachusetts, both the ICC, I mean, and the uh, IRC and the IBC, chapter one is a total amendment. Perfect. And the energy code. And then we, of course, have the uh, stretch code. Oh, of course. <laughs> so basically, when an application comes up, you have to look into the zoning, you know, if you're reviewing it, then you look at the, you know, commercial IBC or residential, the IRC, and then you have to look at the mass amendment. So it's three things you got to take a look at what you yeah. account for. So the code, the code books you would keep here then? Yes. Okay. Any other questions, Dave? No, I'm Crystal? good. I'm good. Jeff, any questions? No. Finance committee, more questions? All good, thank you. Thank you. Uh, all righty. Thank you very much, sir, Tom. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Have a good night. So we need to. Uh, Can you see that? It's the cogs. Sir. But it doesn't say what the. Uh, Northfield is sort of the closest. <laughs> that was a rough pan there. Yeah. So what I'm looking at right now, Jeff, Jeff um, 
has the Franklin County wage and salary survey. Oh, yep. Yeah. The one they put up not too long ago. I, it, it's in, it's it's interesting when you when you look at this because the Frank m many of the towns in Franklin County use the inspectional services for the FERCOG, yeah. yet they don't put their own rates in there. Yeah, that is interesting. <laughs> I just think that's kind of interesting. Okay, all right. So we're we're going to have to make a determination about which way we want to go with that. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, George. Highway Department. Just a few changes on, on, the, on the budget for this year. Uh, the highway garage line items, that's going to stay the same because some of that comes out of the town hall for the electrical and stuff like that anyway. Um, tree warden expense is going to be going down because of the large project that we had out here with the elm, the elm tree for the library. Mm -hmm. um, so most of that would be going back down. I think I might have bumped that up uh, a little bit. So how did that work out, George? Okay. Yeah, so far so good. I guess they got one more treatment to do over there, I think, for fertilizer this summer. Hmm. Or, two, or two more things. I think that's what Catherine was saying to me. She's been taking care of most of that um, with Bartlett Tree. They, they've been doing most of that project. And she just calls me when she has questions on certain things and what they want to do, she asks me about it. So. <clears throat> okay. Uh, highway, none of the, I put in 3% raises for everybody, but we weren't sure on those. So it's just kind of a budgetary type of thing. So we're yeah. still, still trying to decide on that. Okay. Personnel committee. So, so personnel committee going to give us a recommendation soon on that, Jeff? We're trying. Crystal? <laughs> we meet again next week? Yeah. Okay. Seasonal wages, I bumped that up a little bit more. It gives me an extra 34 hours a summer for that $500. $500. Uh, that extra summer help kid uh, helps us get a lot of small miscellaneous stuff done through the summertime. Yeah. It's, a, it's a big help. Labor overtime, it's pretty much the same. Some years we use most of it, some years we don't. Uh, well, it depends on the storms and stuff we get. Yeah. Highway department expenses, I bumped that up like 2000 The price of everything right now is, is starting to go through the roof. Um, I'm hoping, hoping that two, 2000 will be enough. Hopefully things will start plateauing and going back down the other way, so. For example, uh, bought a hydraulic filter the other day. It used to cost me 79 It cost me 140 Ooh. It's getting ridiculous. Machinery yeah. expense went up 2000 for repairs and stuff on some of the older equipment we have. We have one truck in particular that seems to be nickel and dime us to death lately. Um, we had a few major repairs lately that we had to put into it. Front brakes for 1600 We had a clutch band going it for another 1400 mm -hmm. It needs a radiator that we can't find anywhere in the country for like 2500 So I got to try to see if I can get somebody to rebuild that. We're trying to limp it through to the summertime so we can hopefully find a radiator shop that will rebuild it, possibly. That's the one that's on, we got targeted on the capital list, right? Yeah, I got some. I got a couple, couple budget numbers for for new trucks, and then um, uh, like the up payment plan, like yep. we're doing for the Western Star. Yeah. So I got some of those numbers for the for the capital request people. And fuel expense, I bumped that up another thousand because fuel yeah. just seems to be going way up. Keeps climbing up. <laughs> yeah. Right now. So. Hopefully things will, hopefully we'll be able to give back some of that money and not spend it all. Snow and ice, I bumped that up this year, a couple of 2,000 on each, each line item, because uh, we, haven't, we haven't bumped it up 
been probably six, seven years now, I think. Um, I know we like to try to keep that low because that's one line item we can can overspend on. And if we pump it up too much, it doesn't make sense to. Okay. Okay, finance committee, any questions for George? So, I, so go ahead. Yeah, the only thing I, yeah, George, I'd just be concerned with some of those prices because I don't, you're being very optimistic. I don't see a lot of those prices going down in the next year or so, especially oil. Right. Oil's definitely not. Well, at the time we did our budget, our oil prices weren't, weren't very high at that time. Right. Now that we've gone, Few, what we do this two months ago. Yeah, it's gone through the roof since then. So that was a that was a conservative number back then. Now it's a now it's a stretch, a little, a little low number. That's yeah, gone way up the last. No, year. I, I agree. I just know what the you know. Are you able to bump it up now? Because I, I think you're definitely going to be under. I mean, over when you spend all the gas. Yeah, we can bump it up. Um, all the other departments will probably have to bump theirs up to police and fire because they they get their fuel from me so i would initially buy it and then they initially pay for it when's that bid out jeff that uh, doesn't get bid until uh july i believe yeah because we do it separate, like I know the COG has a fuel Correct. bid process, but we don't participate. The COG in that, does so. it early; we do it a little later than they do. Because we don't, we haven't gone through uh, bidding with the COG. I think we attempted it one year, a long time ago, but okay. I think we went with it. And it's usually a little bit cheaper in the summer, right? Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Use, use, a lot of times we've been getting pretty pretty good prices on, on the fuel. Um, sometimes fixed price works better than the, the variable, and sometimes the variable works. It's I I know I know we have in the past we have had the fixed rate, then we have had a looked at a credit card to to go to the local if the prices go yeah. or go. Back down. Right. So we we've done both. So um, we we've been pretty flexible with that. Mm -hmm. So I would say that we probably have to do that again. It's not like it's the first time that we we've seen prices no. peak like this. Um, so we'll just have to keep watching that. But I I do know that. We have been getting much better prices than the COG has mm -hmm. because we seem to be a little closer. When, when they quote a price for the COG, they may have to go to a row. Right. So there's the distribution cost goes way up. Mm -hmm. And that has to be figured into the price as well. So us, we're a little closer to 91. We're closer to where they're typically delivering also. So. We've been able to get a better price as well, so we've been saving our money on this. Right. All right. Any other questions for George? Yeah, I don't think so. Good. So, so we talked about the capital stuff from the capital meeting. So yeah, yeah. So so when when you uh, bring the the greater in, you're, are you are you the uh, laborer for the uh, greater, or are you hire no, them? They, they actually give us a a, a driver or an operator in the usually takes them a half a day. Yeah. So you're, you're talking Hubbard Hill? Hubbard Hill, East Plum Tree, and then uh, Cranberry Pond sometimes. How, how's that working out this year with the, uh, the putting up the barricades? Good, I had one person down there so far, that's it. Oh, good. How did you get one person down there, George? Because we have it blocked off on 63 side, and then we have it blocked off down by the pond. Yeah, so they so came on the railroad tracks? They went through the, so they can't go up on the railroad track side. So 
so yeah, that side they, can't the other they can way. drive down to the pond through the snowbank if they want to get down there and a uh, Amazon truck or something went down there <laughs> well we had some of the ice I told, there I was told, no snow I bank so we went down so it. I had a three by three sign that I put at the very top so now you can't miss a sign to not go down there so and it's been pretty good so do you plow do you plow the a uh, parking spot across from Chad's house Did that turn around yeah yeah that gets because we used to have to turn around up there yeah but I I, I plow that okay yeah, just to keep it open ah. So does it bring everybody to that, that, that house halfway up the... We actually, this year, we put some no parking signs up along the sides of the road through there because people were just parking all over the place. And then sometimes when we go to plow snow and it's snowing out and they're still out hiking, their cars are on the side of the road and we're weaving around all kinds of cars. So it's been pretty good this year. We haven't had a lot of cars parking outside of the parking area at the, at the Toby. Yeah. That I think the state might need to think into making a bigger parking lot up there yeah. or adding on to that one because there is a lot of cars that park there. Yeah, I think oh, there's a lot. Oh, yeah. 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 On winter yeah. solstice, spring solstice, summer solstice. Yeah. I mean, you, 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 they park from 47 all the way to the pond. I'll probably, I'll probably put a little bug in Phil Gilmore's ear one of these days when I see him to talk about maybe possibly putting putting an extension of the parking lot, even if we had to help them. I oh, you talked to Phil Gilmore? Yeah. 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 He, he owes me, he, he we, we, we cut down a couple of trees for him. Yeah. So, <laughs> that we never got reimbursed for, so. He fixed up his electrical wires. Okay. Yeah. Okay, any other questions for George? All right, George, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hope it doesn't snow again, George. I uh, know. I'm ready for the other side now. Yeah. Me too. Huh. Looking good for this week anyway. So. No. All right there, Mr. Mr. Jeffrey. What do you got up next for us? Uh, the Select Board Town Administrator budget. Um, which essentially is going to stay the same as last year with the exception of uh, wages um, for the administrative assistant to the select board and myself. Um, mine is contracted and uh, again um, when, once we have the recommendation of the personnel committee that that would apply to the admin assistant as well. Um, Otherwise, um, I, I, it would basically the the moderator salary and select board salary. Oh, I thought David would, since he's leaving the board, he'd want to leave us a big increase in the select board salary. Yeah, I'm open to. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, big big increase, right, Dave? Sure. <laughs> Always agree with your boss's raises, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. Um. So, you know, I, I think the the. I think we I think we've cut our salary more than we raised our salary, Jeff. Yeah, two years ago. Yeah, two zero. Well, right? no, we've done it more than yeah. We did it before that too. So. Yeah. Um, then that that damn will sell and increased it back up. So. Yeah, anyway. so I think generally we we've been staying within the the budget and we're not seeing. Um, you know, aside from energy costs, really any significant expenses. So, um, trying to live within our means and have been doing so fairly successfully this year. So, didn't see a need to, to increase. So, you don't think you're going to have to do the uh, town office energy? You're going to have to increase that at all? Um, are you happy with that? I, I think that. With the the savings from the um, from the heat pumps that we installed a couple of years ago, yep. um, I think that we're we're still doing well with that. That's good. It's have have you? Or do you think you're going to bump or end up in the ener energy contingency line item? Uh, this year, I I 
don't expect we will, um, but I do want to, I, I will look at, at the oil and electricity again to see how much yep. we're using and try and extrapolate out if energy prices go up. So, so um, finance, what we did many years ago to try to take care of the uh, unpredictability of the uh, energy costs is we instituted an in energy contingency program or line item so and basically it can be used by the uh, all the town you know all the town departments if energy costs fuel oil whatever goes up we or electricity we have we have an option there also so so we may we may want to talk to the police and fire and George one more time about their line item and and if we if we could always have the option of increasing our energy contingency also okay have you been using those to heat at all the heat pumps yeah okay good that's what I thought good yep no absolutely we've been trying to keep the the um like for the oil the boilers, boilers like yeah um i think we turned it down to like 65 and then anything yeah. in the individual offices we need above that yeah nice that's good that should be good we should and, and that that'll i mean i know electricity's gone up but that'll help us you know yeah and at least we've got the solar to help offset that so. right Okay, any questions on the select board budget? No. Thank you. Uh, finance, I guess that's gonna be it for uh, our budget presentations for tonight. So you're more than welcome to hang around if you don't want. We're gonna talk about the town meeting calendar. Uh, ARPA discussion, which you may if you want to, if you want to stay on, we can do the ARPA discussion now. Um, so, why don't we just, Jeff? Could you uh, take us through your ARPA discussion, please? Sure. So, um, I think a couple weeks ago, this is more or less the the same. Oh, there we go. The the same memo, and I'll try and. Ooh, stop. Sorry. I'm not used to this mouse. Um, so basically looking at the, the next um, potential projects that we discussed a couple weeks ago, um, police cruiser replacement and public safety generator wiring. Um, Um, in the public safety realm, in education, um, the replacement of sprinkler glycol, and I, th I think it was five of the 12 um, circuits, yeah. Yeah. Uh, upgrading the phone system, boiler replacement, which I think would be the school's number one priority um, at this point. And there was discussion about whether or not to um, look at renewable sources for heating. And I think that the concern from the, that I heard from the school is that there's about at least a six month um, delay in from when you order it to when it gets received. And um, so they're gonna need another boiler before next winter because talking about alternative energy sources is a, a much larger discussion um it's gonna take longer and everything it'd be right. nice but right but um having only one boiler heading into next winter is not a, a sustainable model for the school um it would put them in a hard place if that one boiler went down and relying on a single boiler in extremely cold temperatures is not advisable um so the the discussion, I believe, at capital planning was that hopefully 
Um, if we can use ARPA money for it, then we could order it sooner rather than later and get it installed before, you know, hopefully over the summer before next school year starts so they would, it wouldn't be an issue. If we wait for the capital budget process, then the funds wouldn't be available until the summer, um, which would mean, you know, a December installation date. So, so discussion on boiler for school. I mean, it needs to be done. So, so I I agree with Crystal. My only thing, Jeff, is that can can we get a letter from the school that they want the boiler replaced? I'm sure they do that. After yeah. that's her number one. That's her number one. Their main priority. I, I'm sure that that would not be a problem. Sure. And, and again, we talked about it a lot in the capital so, and stuff too. So I, I I would entertain a motion. I would entertain a motion for their boiler replacement at the present time. Contention upon receiving a letter from Ben or Darius or the facilities that it's not their their number one requirement right now. Yeah, motion. I second it. Okay, we have a motion made, seconded. Any further discussion? Does that make sense, Jeff? Yep. So, uh, well, I'll let you vote. No, go ahead. Um, so it, it's approved, contingent on the receipt of the letter. As soon as I get that, I'll send it to you, and then they can move forward, right? Yeah. Okay. Is that good, Davey? Sounds good. Crystal? Sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay, motion made, seconded with the uh, stipulation we receive a letter from the schools. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Is that that's three zero? Yeah. All right, so. You'll get a letter pretty quickly. So, I, I would, I would go back on, I, I would say the public safety complex generator wiring to me that that's something that's been ongoing for a long long yeah, time want to do that for a while so, yeah right yeah I mean, and, we, and we knew we, we put off the police cruiser last year so i don't i don't i think those are right now something that i would support yep. i would support them also I agree okay so we have a motion uh motion i second it any discussion? Hear no discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. So the cruiser replacement and the PSC generator wiring. At the same time, Jeff, can you check with um, this facility is supposed to have wired for transfer switch also? Could you please call Mr. Bergeron and ask him what this needs? This building. This build. We were supposed to be able to park a generator outside here. Oh, and then run it, and then run it. What we need to. And that would that would take care of the library and here. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, and then the the last section in the ARPA discussion at this time um, for the the highway is looking to replace ceiling tiles and insulation in the office. Um, David, correct me. I think I think there was some issue with infiltration of water in yep. the insulation and potentially causing some mold or. Yep. Uh, um, and so they want to so they fix the problem of the water infiltration i think that would be part of it as well as making right, sure that, that yeah then. so can can we have a can we have a, a full description of what's so if they're gonna if they're gonna be a fixing or or so a fixing gonna, of the roof or whatever yeah can okay. we have can we get a full yeah. Um, uh, fixing the tile and getting some insulation, because there's not much in the way of insulation, as I recall, in there at all. 
I cannot use this. Yeah, well, would. Yeah, I'll get, uh. Yeah, I'll get more information. Okay. Hopefully that will save us on fuel costs, too, when that's in there a little bit. Well, and then, too, just the molds. And the molds yeah. always on, an issue. on the carpet replacement in the library. Are we sure there's no asbestos mastic in the library? Um, under the carpet? Under, yeah. I, I am not sure. I mean, it, well, it was built 20 it's, years ago. Uh, yeah, Doesn't but, matter. but okay. you still could use, you couldn't buy new mastic with stuff. asbestos, but they'd still, if they had stuff on the shelf, and guess what? With bid projects, a lot of times it's tedious. So, can we just make sure there's no yeah, I don't think before I that. before I I would vote for doing that. I would want to make sure to fully understand what what's going to be involved with the project. Yeah, and I think the the discussion at uh, Capital Planning Committee was to approve. Um, was it 25,000, I think, to do the children's room where really the carpet is starting to yep. buckle a little bit right. um, and to see how that goes before and then ask the library to come back. Uh, that make, and it makes total sense, but can we just can we just ask yeah. to make sure that there's no... And, so this, and, you're, and, you, and you can say, well, it was done 20 years ago, but I, I know... Yeah. Close yeah. enough to that cut over time that somebody be like, hey, we still got 10 cans of that. Use that up first. And so this cost here, though, right. is the entire library, not just the children's room. So we'd be looking at a right. lesser. And, and the Small amount, yeah. I believe the the majority of the cost and all um, is moving the stuff in and out. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So when you get to the library and the stacks and then yeah. hauling all that out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yes, I will. Uh, I will confirm that that there's no asbestos. I I just know that up until a few years ago, though, the United States was still importing 15 million tons of asbestos a year. Well, fireproofing and a lot oh. of other stuff like your chimney pipes and still out there. I'm just saying. It's 15 million tons are still being imported every year, so. Okay. Yep. All right. Any other questions? So, we need to find out about the ceiling tiles, the carpet, asbestos, and or if we're just doing the one section. The phone system upgrade, we were looking for some additional information for that. Did you get that? Yes. That, yeah. You get that in email, right? The yeah. Phone breakdown. Oh, there it is. So, uh, the you can you see that? Okay. Mm -hmm. So that that's the breakdown of the um, types of phones and the cost per phone. We just want to make sure that we're not going to be obsolete after it's put in in, in a year. Right. So what is it? They voice over now, David? They they are using VoIP, yeah. For the, but like that, that should hold us over for a while. Uh, and there was discussion about this at the Capital Planning Committee, too, and I'm trying to remember... Um, it was a right because there was a request for server hardware, and one of the members asked, "Well, do we need our own server? Isn't or am I mixing up projects, David? The about cloud." The, yeah, hold on. What was that for? I thought it was about this. I think it was because we did discuss right, but. Yeah, does it make sense to have run our own server versus have, you know, sort of a virtual cloud-based system? Is that you, Peter? 
No? There it is. Yeah, I, um, that was about the uh, stuff going on at the public safety complex. Oh, right. You're right. Yep. The, the controllers. Oh, the, for the controllers. Right. Thank servers. you, Peter. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah. And that, that makes sense. Yeah. Because yeah. this is a little different. And then I, I believe a, a couple of years ago, um, the schools started bringing the telecommunications and IT stuff in house, so yes. they they would be able to they service and repair IT. and make sure if the phones go down, they'd be able to fix it. Yeah, which is good. So we don't have the added cost of IT service on top of on top of the equipment. So. Now, was there cable running and stuff like that in that estimate, or no? It's just the phones itself? Yeah, I don't think they needed to run. They didn't need to run anything. We, yeah, and we had asked that question about the intercom thing. Right, yeah. They don't need to, they can utilize existing wires, Okay. So, which is good. It's just all the equipment that gets changed out. Do we need a separate motion on these items? Um, I think that's how we decided to do it, right? Yeah. Like, do we want one for the rest of the remaining ones, or do we want to do each category separately? Um, I think that... Well, you already did the um, Public contingent centuries. boiler. Yep. Public safety and cruiser. Um, I'm just trying to look. So really, we just have the other education items and then the other government services left. Right, so the other government services, we still need more info on both of those. Yep. Right. Um, yeah, and we haven't really talked about, I don't, I guess I would say that um, aside from the glycol sprinkler, which I think they want to get done for cold and, and safety reasons. I don't think that there's um, a huge rush to do the phone system um, or the gable vent and soffit repairs. I think they, but, but they're still. Probably the weather, I would probably do that in the warm weather, right? I would imagine yeah. for the soffit. And well, we, we, can, we can bring up, we got, we got a few things. We got the police, we got the generator, we got the boiler. Yeah. We got the, um, what was that other one? I don't even think we discussed a time frame for the phone system, did we? I, 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 I got one person to ask. I want, I want to just make, Make sure that that we're using a voiceover, that we're in, using a voiceover protocol. That that's what the system is. So I got the. I saw you had it, so I'll just look it up. So I just want to make sure. I, and again, I I know that where where I work, even they're they're getting away from phones per se. They're they're chain, They're not wiring yeah. phones any longer. So they're a little different than what they do it in the schools. When, yeah. when we had talked about it. But yeah, because we don't, my office doesn't have actual phones anymore. It's all, all through our PCs. Yeah. And yeah. Headset. So. But. And we, um, I was thinking about for the next ARPA discussion, um, bringing back the, the two things that you had quite wanted more information on, or the three things, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then would that be a good time to, go through sort of the list that we got uh, recommendations from the public you would ask to yeah. reach out to them and yeah. um they, those have still been coming in and just at least going okay. through and saying hey i'd like more information on these five or something and yep. then i can go back and you have contact information for the ones from the public um i i i think that the public had ideas i think it, it would probably they probably wouldn't 
be able to provide like estimate. I think no, that would be no. my homework. But yes, right. I, I can trace back but, who. You know, was. just in case there's something there that we're just not quite sure what the scope of what they're asking for is. Right. Yep. Go back to another question. Yep. Can go back and see. Yep. yep. Good. Does not look good. All right. So we have our votes taken, right? Yes. Peter, did you want to add something? Um, I just, <clears throat> Tom, with, with regard to the question you asked about, was it uh, Darius's first priority and you wanted something in writing about that? Um, I sent him an email, I look back just now, it was dated February 11th, which was after the um, earlier round of, of ARPA funding that you voted for, and I said, okay, you know, let's, let's you know, I want to make sure I know what your, your top priority is of what's left on your, your list. And he came back right away and said the boiler is. So um, I'm sure it's not going to be any problem to get, you know, what you need there yeah. for documentation. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I would agree. Um, just one other comment from my recollection on the uh, library carpeting discussion that we had at the Capital Planning Committee. Um, uh, my recollection is that the amount they were talking about for doing the children's room was something in the range of sixteen to 18000 and that was going to be the suggested first part, as you say. It's just that yeah. the number that, that I remember being associated with it was the sixteen to 18000 but, you know, that should be checked on. Yeah, I, I'll double check. But I, I think that ultimately the request was 20000 because the potential contingency, but... I, yeah, that, yeah. That, that makes sense. Now that you say that. Yeah. I think we said like up to 20. Right. right? That was yeah. our, if I remember. Yep. But I, I will double check that and um, add that as sort of an option for next week's discussion, uh, with, along with the full amount. Sounds good. Any comments from the Finance Committee? No, it's good, good uh, progress. Thanks, Jeff. No questions. Everything looks good. Yeah, uh, I, if we're going to continue to use those, we need better speakers. Yeah, it's that weird echo. Can you can you hear them? Yeah, I can the hear them. But then there's an I don't echo. think that's our system, though. Yeah, that's feedback through the. Yeah, I can hear it all right. But yeah, it just sounds very tinny to me. Okay. Well, yeah, we're Peter's, Peter's got a question. question. I'm just giving you feedback. Looking on my laptop here, your sound is coming through very good. Is it? Okay. All right. Good. Great. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate that. Much better than it was a couple months ago when there were problems. I'm just, it's very good now. That's because the mic for that us is in the camera on that one, right? Yeah. yeah. So, because we've got the camera on the table and the mic's right in that, so that helps. That's good so, to know that. So in, in, in fact, Peter, the, we were talking before we went live because John was trying to get everything set up. There, there's, there's, a need, there's a need to actually change our setup for all of this right now. So they're gonna start, they're gonna start putting together the uh, proposal to do that so that's why we we voted to <laughs> we, we took a vote to uh, buy FCAT a uh, iPhone 13 so they could tape they Tom could wants tape to be in 4k so yeah hey yeah. I, I mean it, it may <laughs> laugh but it may you you watch a lot of these cooking shows and stuff like that now that's that's what they're taping them on oh yeah you know so Yep. Maybe it's something. Maybe it's something that we have to look at. I mean, who knows? Anyways, all right. Um, annual town meeting calendar. Jeff. Yes. So um, we started discussing this. Finance committee, I'm going to leave that now. Is that okay? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah we're we're, we're set. Everyone have a great week. Thank you. You too. Thank Thanks, you. Joe. Um, started discussing this two weeks ago, and you all kindly pointed out that some of the dates were not correct, so hopefully they are now. Um, 
Articles are due by Friday, March 18th. Um, Monday, March 28th, a month from today, is the meeting to vote any ballot questions to add it to the ballot. Um, April 9th is the last day to register in elections and at annual town meeting. Uh, Monday, April 18th would be the meeting with the finance committee to review the warrant articles and sign the warrant. Uh, April 20th, uh, Wednesday is the last day to mail notice to residents of town meeting. The annual town meeting and election warrants would be posted by Friday, April 22nd. Uh, annual town meeting would occur the following Friday, April 29th. Uh, and that's currently scheduled to be an indoor town meeting at 7 p.m. at the elementary school. Uh, and then the following, uh, the following week, uh, a week from that Saturday, eight days later, um, annual elections, Saturday, May 7th, uh, at the library from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Okay. Um, good. Is caucus next week? Caucus is 6.30 p.m. Uh, Monday, March 7th. It's not on our little thing here. It is not. Show on our other important dates. Okay. Any other questions? Any questions about the uh, calendar? Yes, you saw my other question. Shoot. Uh, two questions, actually. Uh, April 18th is that Patriots Day, and will you be taking that day off? Just looking at this uh, watch uh, calculator right now. Uh, Linda, do you know if that is Patriots Day? <laughs> Says it's tax day on my phone calendar. Because usually, Let's see. yep, it is the 18th. It's usually around the 17th or 18th. So, yep, that makes sense. Thank you. So, um, you're going to have to do that up again. Would, would you be willing to vote contingent on me changing that to Tuesday, April 19th? What? Uh, Does that give enough time for? The twentieth mailing, and it doesn't upset anything else. Uh, the twentieth mailing is just a postcard of the okay. um, dates and locations. Um, but I will, conf you know what? I'll confirm with the town. Make, make sure we make sure the there's the dates are specific. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, nice Thank catch. You, And one other question, when is the school committee coming? Uh, the Frontier and elementary schools are coming March 14th. March 14th. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anything else? Select board updates? David? Uh, I have a Union 38 negotiation meeting on Thursday this week. And there don't have to be capital meetings this week, so we'll break from that. Okay. Crystal? Personnel next Monday before this. Other than that. So, so a couple things. One is the... Uh, um, South County Senior Center sent out their newsletter today. Just want to let everybody know that they do have a new director, and it's Jennifer Jennifer Remillard. Right now, the Senior Center is holding its its meetings Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, it's open, and it's now at the Holy Family Church in the Pope 
John Paul II. Um, and Jennifer is, is trying to um, expand the programs. So if you haven't been to the Senior Center in a while, um, I would, I would uh, say take an opportunity, go over and, and see uh, Jennifer and, and what she's trying to do with the, uh, with the, um, the Senior Center. They also, uh, they still are having uh, grab and go meals for lunch and you can make the reservations, call before 10 a.m. two days in advance and they get a menu to you. It's, uh, you can email info at lifepath.org, the dining centers. Um, one of the, the other numbers that they have, they usually post is the regional emergency dispatch number. Instead of calling 911 if you need certain services, you can dial the dispatch center directly and that's 413-625-8200. Um, and you know, they, they're, they, they're, we just had the senior survey they're just putting all those numbers together, right? I think they had over 1,300 respondents yep. to the survey from the three towns. Um, so that was an excellent um, outpouring of, of people taking the survey. Um, did we set a date and time yet when we want the senior center to present their budget? Uh, we have not asked the senior center to present their budget since I've been here. Is that? I think Jennifer wants to come. Okay. So if you could set up a time for her. Yep. You, you get to give her a call. There's also a new organization helping seniors. It's called Valley Neighbors. And... They begin offering support services for elders 60 plus, including rides, pickups, and pickups. And Valley Neighbors serves Whiteley, Deerfield, and Sunderland is is offering uh, rides, friendly support services to resident members 60 years plus who want to live independent, engaged lives in their homes with a little neighborly help. Current services include transportation, phone, check-ins, tech help, and more on a limited basis following COVID safety practices. So I, I, if, if, if you are 60 plus and you can always get the newsletter, it's a wealth of information that's included in there. Also, the Board of Health in the town of Sunderland had a meeting this evening and starting tomorrow morning, um, the, there is no longer going to be a mask mandate in the town of Sunderland. That applies just to that, not saying to the schools or anything else like that. They want to make that sure, perfectly clear. And you know, if business wants to do a mask mandate, they can still do mask mandates at a, at a place of business. Um, if you want to still wear your mask, you're more than can, but. And, and we've been here before. We did not too long ago. So um, so things will be changing in the town of Sunderland tomorrow concerning masks, according to the uh, Board of Health. Town Administrator updates? Um, last week there was a lot of rain and snow and a, a few more Drainage issues were noted on North Main Street um, sidewalks, and so the highway superintendent is put, he had a meeting scheduled with the engineer um, already this week, so they're going to look at those as well. Okay. Um, the Riverside Park construction, they said they wanted to start as soon as 
as soon as the ground started thawing after March 1st, so probably not tomorrow, <laughs> but not, yeah. w once we start getting nice weather, I think it's supposed to be cold this week, but they said as soon, um, they, can. they started ordering material, it started to come in, so they're getting ready to go uh, right away. And um, the other good news is that a Sunderland resident um, who works at UMass has volunteered with their class to help do, I think I'm going to say this right, remote sensing to look for water in the field because we had irrigation and we d d dug the test well, didn't find anything. So yeah. um, through that class, I think that's going to be March 23rd, they're going to be out here and they said they, they should have results shortly thereafter, at least yeah. preliminary results. So that's, that's great news and, and we're very thankful for, for the professor in that class. Um, and um, the garage road sidewalk reconstruction um, request for quotes or um, request for written quotes is due tomorrow. So we've started receiving some of those. So hopefully we will be able to do that. And then uh, a quick update from the town clerk, which is that the warrant needs to be signed and posted by Friday the 22nd. So Tuesday, uh, April 19th for a meeting to sign the warrant um, would be okay, but I can review uh, update the, the whole memo and, and bring it back next week if you'd like. No, those are my updates. Okay, very good. That's good. All right. Anything else? Peter? You guys, you were getting ready to put together the school budget before us? Yeah, we, we've had that uh, uh, since earlier this month. Uh, and then we have uh, two days after they come before you, we have our regular school committee meeting for the month, and that'll include our public hearing is required by law. Um, so hopefully in that, that week we'll get a lot wrapped up. Okay, thank you, so, We also, Tom, we also have a, a joint school committee meeting, meeting Union 38 and Frontier all together on Wednesday evening this week mm -hmm. uh, to discuss the, the possible change to the masking uh, requirements at the school um, and the proposal is that they be uh, eased uh, but not take effect for another couple weeks uh, wanting to give a couple weeks uh, at least after school break in case there's any increase in numbers after people being out and about during school vacation week um, that's just what proposed that what's been proposed by the administration um, obviously, we'll see how the meeting goes. Good. Okay, anything else? Mm -hmm. Jeff? Good. John? I motion when you turn. I'm not a select board member. Yeah, but usually have words of wisdom for us. Okay. You might say it's the wrong John. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. Uh, motion, please. <laughs> I motion we adjourn. Second. Yeah, motion made uh, seconded. Oh, he didn't finish yet. <laughs> to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, three zero. Declare us out at eight oh one, please. Thank you, Jeff.